blessed be your name, O oh God. Abba, Father, we worship you, Lord. We give you all the glory tonight. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. Ancient of days, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Father, we just want to say thank you. We appreciate your holy name. We exalt you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You are worthy, O oh Lord, immortal, invisible, the holy wise God. Blessed be your name in the mighty name of Jesus. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive all the says in Isaiah chapter 25 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 25 verse 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering, of the covering cast over all people mm. and the veil that is spread over all. I just want us to pray tonight that Lord God Almighty, whatever that is not allowing your word to have impact in my life, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let it be destroyed. Amen. Because when there is a covering cast over somebody's mind, it does not matter what you tell him, it does not matter what you preach to him, it does not matter what you reveal to him, because the mind is covered. And thank God we are adding up the month of manifestation. That Lord God Almighty, anything that is hindering the manifestation of the word of God in my life, that Lord let it be destroyed. Shall we talk to God in one minute tonight in the name of Jesus? That Father, I pray tonight in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you for this opportunity to pray this prayer. And Lord God Almighty, I ask for your mercy over my life tonight in the name of Jesus. And I pray whatever that is not allowing your word to have impact in my life. Whatever that is not allowing your word to have impact in my life. Lord, destroy them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, destroy them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God Almighty, every covering cast over the soul, over the soul of your people, over my soul, let it be destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Quickly, before I leave, the soul of man is the, is the seat of emotions and all other things like that. The spirit of man is the house of the Holy Spirit. It is possible for the spirit to be, to be manifesting gifts and the soul is already damaged. There are believers that their souls are damaged. We are going to talk to God. One of the things that damages, uh, that can damage people's soul is when there is a covering cast. The person will not be able to see himself or herself in the light of the word of God. Let's talk to God tonight in the name of Jesus. Every covering cast that is not allowing me to see my life in the light of the word of God, that is not allowing me to see in the light of the word of God, let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let's talk to God tonight in the name of Jesus. Every covering cast, every covering cast 
that is not allowing me to see in the light of the word of God. It is possible for somebody to be, to be prophesying, but the soul is already damaged. It is possible for somebody to continue to speak in tongues, but the soul is in captivity. Let's turn on God this morning, I mean this night, the Father, in the name of Jesus. As your word comes tonight, in the name of Jesus, let your word release deliverance into my life. Let your word set me free, in the name of Jesus. Our Lord, heal me from any form of blindness. Heal me, Lord God Almighty, from any form of blindness. Any form, because when there's a covering cast, there will be, be blindness. People will be blinded to the truth. People will be blinded to the things they're supposed to be open unto. Let's call on God tonight that Lord open my eyes. Lord, remove any form of blindness in my life. Remove any, any form of blindness in my life. In the name of Jesus. Rakeza li paragadabadia. In the name of Jesus. Father, open my eyes. In the name of Jesus. Let, there be, let your word be manifested unto me. Jesus said in that John chapter 9 that the name of the Lord be made manifest in him. Because the, because the covering cast over that man's, over my, that man's life was, was removed. That God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, Lord, let your name be made manifest in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Speak your word to us tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, please speak your word to us in the name of Jesus. Lord, speak your word to us in the name of Jesus. Let your word meet us at the very point of our knees. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Powers entering the manifestation of the life of Christ in me. Be roasted by fire in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed by Father, the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Uh, finally, let's pray and call on God tonight and say, Father, take control. In the name of Jesus, the verse you have prepared for tonight's meeting, that Lord speak through her in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, let your word be expounded unto us. In the name of Jesus, that let your word bring, the Bible says, the entrance unto your word, bring, into your word brings light. Bring understanding unto the simple. Lord, let the entrance unto your word tonight bring light into our life. Let every darkness expire in the mighty name of Jesus. That Father, let there be manifestation of your promises. Let there be manifestation of the power of your words in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word proceed with authority. Let your word proceed with simplicity. In the name of Jesus. Do something new, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Do something. Something new in my life, something new in my life, oh Lord, do something new in my life, something new in my life, something new in my life, oh Yes, Father God, please take over this vessel. Let it not be anything of me, but you, what you have prepared through me, Lord God. Let me not stand in the way of people being able to see you, being able to see what needs to be heard, what needs to be seen about you tonight, Lord God. Remove me from this place and place yourself here by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen, Lord God. We're still talking about a man which was born blind from his birth. And we're continuing on the third story. How should we see Jesus? We had looked at John chapter 1 for this, verses 1 to 18. That first of all, Jesus is the word found in verse 1. Jesus is God, also found in verse 1. Jesus is the creator, found in verse 3. Jesus is life, found in verse 4. Jesus is the, the light of all men, also found in verse 4. That <coughs> Jesus is the giver of adoption by God. Thank you, Father. That's found in verse 13. That Jesus is God made flesh, verse 14 that he is the God, the glory of God, 14. He is the only son from God, 14. The one full of grace and 
uh, truth, um, verse 10. So that's interesting. That's probably wrong. Um, the giver of grace and truth, verse 17. The one and only son who has seen God, verse 18. Who is God himself, verse 18. Who is at the Father's side, verse 18. And that he is the revealer of God, verse 18. And I'd like to take the time to read that passage. <coughs> so, starting with verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's Numbers 1 and 2. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created through him. Three, he's the creator. And apart from, from him, not one thing was created that has been created. In him was life. That was number four. He is the giver of life. And that life was the light of men. <coughs> Going on. That light shines in the darkness, thank God. And yet the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God. This is just a little side piece in this scripture. Whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. So people had opportunity to believe. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world... Um, was created through him, yet the world did not recognize him. They were blind. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. They were willfully blind. Verse 12, but all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God. Those who believe in his name who were born not of natural descent, nor the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. That was point six. The word became flesh, point seven, and dwelt among us. And we observe his glory, the glory as the one and only son from the father, point eight. Full of grace and truth, point nine. Verse 15, John testified concerning him and exclaimed, This is the one of whom I said, The one coming after me ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. Indeed, we have all received grace upon grace from his fullness. Bless the Lord God. That was number 10. <coughs> Verse 17, For the law was given through Moses, and through that law came death. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, and through that came life. Number 11, no man has ever seen God. The one and only Son, point 12, who himself is God, 13, and is at the Father's side, 14, he has revealed God to us, point 15. That's such a glorious passage, and it is so full of how we should be seeing Jesus. Our study of John 9 had shown clearly from the miracle of the man whose sight was healed that his faith was increased, and he chose to believe in the Christ, the Son of Man, which is another name for the Son of God. John 9.35 says, Jesus heard that they had thrown out the blind man from the synagogue. I'm adding the words. And when he found him, he asked, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And <coughs> verse 38 sa 36 says, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Because the blind man had never seen Jesus he asked, 37, Jesus answered, you have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. 
he said, I believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. The blind man now has found his sight spiritually and physically. He now knows who is the Son of God, the one who can save his soul as well as his human life. He was able to find a job now. He was able to find his way easily around in the city now. But this same miracle caused others to refuse to believe and to determine to prevent others from being able to believe as the Jewish synagogue leaders did. And we looked at this after his parents in verse 22. I said that <coughs> they, they felt they had to deny knowing what happened to their son because they were afraid. Um, it says his parents said these things about their son that we know he's our son, that he was born blind, but we have no idea how he received his sight. And they said that because they were afraid of the Jews. Since the Jews had already agreed that if anyone confessed him, that is Jesus as the Messiah, that person would be banned from the synagogue. They had already determined to make it impossible for people to find Christ in the place where you would think the church you should be able to find the Lord. So Jesus pronounces a word against these leaders. In verse 39, he said, I came into this world for judgment in order that those who do not see will see and those who do see or think they see will become blind. Further, Jesus pronounces, oh, I just put a picture with that. He's talking to the leader. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard him say these things and asked him, we aren't blind too, are we? These very proud leaders. And Jesus says to them, if you were blind, you wouldn't have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. God forbid. Father, remove any blindness I may have about the attitude of my heart. Father, prevent me from becoming blind to you in terms of seeing your salvation for myself, for the salvation of my family, the salvation of my community, and all those my life and influence may touch. In Jesus' name we Amen. pray. Amen. God, give us sight. In many passages in the New Testament, we saw how to see, and we looked at four of them already, that he is the word, a term that means God, as well as God, he is also God's human son, starting in John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, and adding 14 to it, and then 17 and 18, and also from Philippians, we see this. And I won't read those scriptures because this is just a review. You can look them up. So the scriptures were, um, again, John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3 and 14, and then 17 and 18, and then Philippians 2, 5 to 8. Jesus as the creator. John 3 says all things were created through him. Apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. <coughs> and then also you can look up John um, 1 10, Colossians 1 16, 1 Corinthians 8 6, where we can see him as creator. Also in review, Jesus is our life. Hallelujah. John 14, 6 says, Jesus told them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. And if you remember that sheep gate in, in the sheep pens out in the fields in, in Palestine and Israel, the doorway was wide enough that the shepherd lay in the doorway and Literally, anyone going into that sheep area had to go over the shepherd or through the shepherd. Jesus as the light. Um, 
<coughs> John 18, 12 spoke of, Jesus then spoke to them saying, I am <coughs> um, the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And um, there are also many scriptures for that. John 9, 25, John 1, 4 to 9, uh, we use Psalm 27, 1, John 12, 36, Ephesians 5, 8, and many more. Oh, I just closed myself out. Mm -hmm. That wasn't good. <laughs> that's not the right one. Well, that's pretty exciting. Excuse me while I try and get back my study. Gotta love technology. Okay, here I am. <coughs> All right, so continuing. <coughs> Jesus is the reason we are adopted by God. John 1 14. But all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And I just bless God that he wanted us as his children way back at the time of Adam. He wanted us as his children way back when he called Abraham he wanted us as his children. He made provision. <coughs> and John 14, 18 says, I will not leave you as orphans. He wasn't going to leave us. Even though we had strayed, even though we had sinned, even though we had lost our way. God is good. Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 6 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. How many blessed are in that passage? <laughs> There's a lot of blessed in there. I didn't count them for before tonight, but I can count probably at least five, just right off the top. God seriously trying to chase us down with blessings. It's his business to bless us and adopt us. I thank him so greatly. I just am in wonder. And then Romans 8, 14 to 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Thank you, Lord God. I'm no longer a slave of fear. I am a child of God. Holy God. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons. So not only are we written in God's will as adopted, but we have a spirit in us of adoption. And as pastor says that spirits are entities, we have this entity that is with us called adoption. And that entity is constantly reminding us, as the rest of the verse says, whom by we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself, which is the Holy Spirit within us, bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. 
if we take up our cross daily, if we remember that purification, James, first chapter of James, that our testing and trying, our suffering is for the perfection, for our beautification, so that we will be perfect and lacking nothing. Bless the Lord God. Suffering with him can mean that we are asked to do something that is terribly, terribly hard, but God also provides the means for escape. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. John 1, 14 says, The word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed his glory, the glory of the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Holy God, we thank you. Jesus is God made flesh. I like this picture of the cradle over the Bible. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed his glory, the glory of the one and only Son from the Father. Blessed Lord God. And 1 Timothy 3.16 says, And most certainly the mystery of godliness is great. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the nations, believed on in the world, and taken up in glory. That's the whole, <laughs> that, that's the whole <clears throat> of our statement of faith, that we know there's a mystery of godliness. We know that he was born of God. That's the statement of our, our faith right there. Thank you, Father God. <clears throat> and Hebrews 2.14 reminds us, Now, since children have flesh and blood in common, Jesus also shared in these, so that through his death he might destroy the one holding the power of death, that is, the devil. He is our brother, born in flesh like us. And Romans 8, 3. What the law could not do since it was weakened by the flesh. It pointed to sin and failure. God did. He condemned sin by the flesh by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as a sin offering. Thank you, Father God. Jesus is the glory of God. Jesus left glory. There's a scripture that says he, he didn't think it was wrong to leave his glory with the Father and come down to heaven to be with us. But he's still the glory of God. John 1, 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed his glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And in John 17, John has so many strong, strong prayers and truths. John 17 talks about Jesus sharing his glory with us and sharing the Father with us as we become one in Jesus and Jesus is one in the Father and we become one in the Father and one in each other. And we share through Jesus, Jesus' glory and we share the glory of God. John 13, 31 and 32 talks about when he had left, Jesus said, now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. The glory of God. Verse 3 in Hebrews 1 to 3 specifically says, The sun is the radiance of God's glory. <laughs> the radiance. What a beautiful word. And the exact expression of his nature, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After making purification for the sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus is the glory of God, the radiance. Blessed Lord God. And John 2, 11, Jesus did this 
the first of his signs that is turning the water into wine, in Canaan of Galilee, he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. So John 17, 24 <coughs> is that passage I was talking about. Father, I want those you have given to me to be with me where I am so that they will see my glory, which thou hast given me because you love me before the world's foundation. No, that isn't the one that I was talking about, but this one does reference Jesus' glory. So, Father, let us look for the glory of God, when we may be facing a major ending of some kind, just as Stephen did in Acts 7, when he was facing the end of his life, he looked up and he saw the glory of God. Father, help us to look up to where our help comes from. Look up for the glory of God to come and give us an expectation when we are facing even our hardest trials, God, help us to look for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, Lord God. It was glory that sustained Jesus through the cross. He, he forsake all, even his life, so that he would, would obtain his glory with back with his Father in heaven. Jesus, the only Son from God, Again, referencing 1 John 14, the passage says, We observe his glory, the glory of the one and only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. Again, John 1, 18, No one has ever seen God, the one and only Son, who himself is God. Again, John 3, 18, references again, The one and only Son of God at the end of the verse. 1 John 4, 9, God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. The 10th point was that Jesus is the one full of grace and truth. Referencing again, John, four, first John, John chapter 1, verse 14. At the end, it says, We observe his glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. If we could only be full of grace and truth, <laughs> Lord God Almighty, it would be, it would be a much different world. John 1, 16 to 18. Indeed, we have all received grace upon grace from his fullness. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus is the one and only son who has seen God. If we get a clear picture by reading God's word, by meditating, by speaking with Jesus, by knowing him, by listening to him, by spending time with him, we can get to see who our Father God is. Just in those moments that we spend time, it isn't just enough to read. It isn't just enough to read the Old Testament and say, oh, our Father God in the Old Testament was kind of harsh and he killed off lots of people and said lots of really harsh things. If we truly want to know the heart of God, we need to see what he's done in Jesus. John 1.18 says, no one has ever seen God, the one and only Son who is himself God and is at the Father's side. He has revealed him. John 6, 46 says, not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God, which is Jesus. He has seen the Father. 
John 14, 7. If you know me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. <laughs> By knowing Jesus, we know God the Father. We know his sweetness. We know his closeness. We know his desire to bless and bless and bless, like that scripture said. At least five blessings all in one passage. Our Father is the Father of love, the one who wants to bless, the one who loves on us. John 1, 18 to 20. No one has ever seen God because he is too terrifying, too marvelous, too amazing, too awesome to see. But the one and only Son, who himself is God and is at the Father's side, that is who has seen God. We observe... Um, I must have that. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observe his glory and the glory as the one and only son from the father. John 10, 30. I and the father are one. Just look at me and you're looking in a mirror and seeing my father. John 14, 9. Jesus said unto him, have I been among you all this time and you do not know me, Philip? The one who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show me the Father? Jesus must have been very perplexed by that time. He'd been with the disciples a long time. He'd said many times that I am the Son of God. I, I know God. The Father and I are one. He'd already said those things to them. And Philip is still scratching his head, saying, um, you know, Jesus, would you please show us the Father? We'll be content. We'll be content if you just show us the Father. And Jesus is going, don't you get it yet? Haven't you figured it out who I am? I am the Father. The Father and I are one. We are one and the same. And Colossians 1, 15 to 17. He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God. God could not come down to earth and be with us, or we would have been slain by his majesty, by his glory, by his greatness. But for God to be able to walk among men again after the garden, he had to send down Jesus as a human being. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Blessed Lord God, for everything was created by him in heaven and on earth. Again, referring back to that he is God, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and by him all things hold together. Thank you, Lord God. Fourteenth second from the last point from that John 1, 1 to 18. John 1, 18 says that no matter, sorry, no one has ever seen God, the only, the one and only Son, who is himself God and is at the Father's side. He is at the Father's side. There are many passages talking about that. Acts 2.33 talks about, <coughs> therefore, since he has been exalted to the right hand of God and has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, he has poured out on what, sorry, he has poured out what you both see and hear. Jesus ascended to the Father. Romans 8.34 tells us Jesus Christ is the one who died, but even more, even more that he died 
he has been raised, he also is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. Thank you, Jesus, that because you are human, you are able to say, Father, Daddy, remember, remember you sent me down to be a human amongst them, and I know what it's like. I remember what it's like. 1 Peter 3.22, who has gone into the heavens is at, is at, and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. God had promised that he would put all things under Jesus' feet after he had completed his task of dying for humanity. And God was faithful to his promise. Mark 16, 19. So the Lord Jesus, after speaking to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And the last point was, Jesus is the revealer of God. So we've read John 1, 18 a few times, saying, no one has seen God, the one and only Son, who is himself God and is at the Father's side. He has revealed him. Bless the Lord God. Amen. Then looking at John 14, 6 to 9, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. That means that Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the one who reveals. If you know me, you will also know my Father, revealing God to us. From now on, you, sorry, from now on, you did not know him and have, am I reading that right? If you know me, you will also know my father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Lord, said Philip, show us the father, and that's enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I been among you all this time, and you do not know me, Philip? The one who has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the Father? And Matthew 1, 27. All things have been entrusted to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son desires to reveal him. Father God, let me be one that you desire that your son desires to reveal you to. God Almighty, let you be revealed to me through Jesus, through your spirit, Lord God. Let me know you deeper. Let me see you deeper. Let me see you more clearly. As pastor prayed at the beginning, remove the c any covering cast that would prevent me from seeing you by seeing Jesus, by seeing through the Holy Spirit. Lord God, reveal yourself. In Jesus' name. And Colossians 1.15. He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. And there's the cross looking at the glory of the resurrection. Blessed Lord God. We don't have time to do a study in Revelation to see all the ways that we can see Jesus. But here's an alphabetical listing. He's the alpha of God's creation, redemption, and consummation. He's Bethlehem's star, the bright morning star. He's the Christ, the counselor, the coming one. He's the door to the sheepfold. He's the everlasting father. He's the faithful witness. He is God's own son, God's gift. He is heaven's glory. He is Emmanuel, the Im image of the invisible God. He is Jesus, the salvation of Jehovah. He is King of Kings. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Lord of Lords, the light of the world. He is majestic, the only mediator between God and man. He is the Nazarene. He is the open door. He is the prophet and priest the Passover, the propitiation for our sins. He is coming quickly. He is the only redeemer. He is the perfect sacrifice. 
He is the truth. He is triumphant, holy God. He is the upholder of all things by the word of his power. He is the victor over death, hell, and the grave. He is the word, the wonderful counselor. He is the excellent exemplar, the exemplar, and the example. He is your only hope, and he is zealous for your salvation. We can see that Jesus is far more than what we may perceive with the human eye alone. We must observe him closely with our spiritual sight and Holy Spirit enabled understanding. Father God, grant us the ability to do this. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen, Lord God. Let us see Jesus in all the ways that he is, in everything that he is, God Almighty. Let us see Jesus as the word of God. Let us see Jesus, Lord God, as God himself, Father. Let us see Jesus as the creator. Let us see Jesus as our very life, God Almighty, holiest God. Let us see Jesus as the light of all men, not just ourselves, but the only hope for a weary and sighing world, Lord God. Let us see Jesus as the giver of adoption through the will of God. Let us see Jesus, Lord God, as God having been made flesh to dwell among us. Father God, let us see Jesus as the only son from God. We are adopted. He is the original. Let us see Jesus as the one full of grace and truth. Father, let us see Jesus as the giver of grace and truth to us. Lord God, if he didn't give us grace, we would not survive. If he didn't give us truth, we would not know of our sin and our need of him. Lord God, let us see him as the one and only son who has seen God. And let us cherish him and spend time with him and nurture our time with him and listen and just be with him because we all want to see the Father. Blessed Lord God. Let us see him that he is God himself and have true reverence, reverential fear, reverential respect, reverential awe, reverential love for him, reverential desire to serve him and hold him as the Holy One. Let us see him and know that he is our intercessor at our Father's side. And let us see him as the revealer, the only revealer of God. There are people who say there are many ways to God, but we know that Jesus is the only way. There are not many ways to come to know Father God. There are not many ways to get to heaven's gate. There are not many ways to enter the kingdom of God. There is only one way. Let us see clearly that Jesus is the only way, the only life, the only truth, the only one who can reveal the Father to us, the only one who can reveal salvation to us, the only one who can reveal our need for salvation. God Almighty, let us see Jesus in his entirety as the King of King and Lord of Lords, as the lover of our soul, but also as the one who will bring judgment. God, let us see Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name, giving you the glory. Amen, Lord God. Amen. <coughs> Holy God.
need help. I know you are here. In your power. I know you are here. Precious Holy Spirit. I know you are here. In your power. I know you are here. Precious Holy Spirit, open my eyes, oh Lord, hallelujah, open my eyes, oh Lord, hallelujah, open my eyes, oh Lord, I am ready. To see you, open my eyes, open my eyes, oh Lord, hallelujah, open my eyes, oh Lord, hallelujah, open my eyes, oh Four weeks now, we've been, teach, we've been learning from that, the, the story of that man. I want us to pray tonight. The question is, are you blind too? Are you blind? Am I blind? And there are, there are things that are, they are capable of blinding the eyes of a believer. Judgment can blind our eyes. The disciples of Jesus Christ, they were blinded by judgment. They quickly asked the master, did he sin or did he spirit? And like Omar told us in the first week, they were trying to conceptualize that it's possible for somebody to be punished for an offense of the parent or for the offense he committed while in the womb. Only God knows the kind of offense that will be. And also, the Pharisees, they were blinded by the offense. Offense that Jesus broke tradition to heal that man on the day, on Sabbath day. The day they supposed to allow him to go home with his blindness. And also, I wrote all those things as Omar was uh, teaching tonight. And also, the, the neighbors, they were blinded by the skepticism. They were skeptical about, is it him? It, it cannot be him. The man was supposed to die with his blindness. So they were blinded. Also the parents, they were blinded by the fear of the authority. The, the fear of, like Omar told us, that they will, they will ban them from coming to the temple. They will not allow them to be there again. And also the Pharisee. They were also blinded once again by, the, by pride. The pride of the controller, or controller of the temple. They were, they were blinded by their pride. The pride of who they are according to the Jewish law. So there are so many things that can blind the eyes of believers. Like I said in the beginning as we prayed in this, uh, this evening, that it is possible for somebody to have a very, that the spirit would still be okay, but the soul is in, is in ICU, in the realm of the spirit. There are so many situations that can make believers to still continue to speak in tongues, like everything will just be normal, but soulishly that person is dead. We are going to talk to God tonight. Now, Lord, please heal me from any form of blindness. Heal me, Lord. You healed that man for the name of the Lord to be glorified or to be made manifest in him. Lord, tonight, is there any area of my life where I have been blinded by religion? Where I have been blinded by what people is going to say? Where I have been blinded by one circumstance or the other? 
let's call on God tonight in the next one minute or two. And we'll just pour our heart unto God and say, Lord, please heal me. Heal me, Lord. I don't know that thing that is blinding your eyes. I don't know that thing that is blinding your eyes. Talk to God tonight. Let, me, let us talk to God, brethren. That, Lord, whatever that is blinding my eyes, let that covering cast be removed. I don't want to be a blind Christian. I don't want to be a blind follower of Christ. That, Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, open my eyes tonight. Like we sang, Father, please open my eyes. Open my eyes. You opened the eyes of that man, and the man never went blind, went blind again. Father, please open my eyes. Let's talk to God. I want to see Jesus. I want to see you in your glory. I want to see you in your power. I want to see you in your candle. I want to see you in your majesty. I want to see you as a restorer. I want to see you as a provider. I want to see you as healer. I want to see you as El Shama. I want to see you as Jehovah Shalom. I want to see you, Jesus. Open my eyes tonight, brethren. Let's call on God. Let's tell him in the next few minutes. Let's say, Lord, please open my eyes. In the name of Jesus, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. I want to see the vision of heaven. I want to see the unseen. I want to hear the un inaudible. Father, please open my eyes. Open my eyes in the name of Jesus. Kill me, heal me from any form of blindness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Kill me, heal me from any form of blindness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, hear me, hear me tonight in the name of Jesus. Heal me, set me free. You set that man free. In the name of Jesus, set me free. That man in John chapter 9, Lord, I don't want to be blind spiritually. I don't want to be blind to my environment. I don't want to be blind to the things you are supposed to see. Lord, open my eyes. Somebody lift up your voice and talk to God. In the name of Jesus. I don't want to be blind, blinded by the, by, by the order of service. Like the order of service, many a times, even in the church, we are blinded by the order of service. We are blinded by the protocol of service. The Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, open my eyes to experience your move, to see your move in the mighty name of Jesus, to see your glory, to see your power in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't want to be blinded by offense. I don't want to be blinded by judgment. I don't want to be blinded, oh Lord God, by pride of life. Oh Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, open my eyes. Open my eyes in the name of Jesus. Heal me. Heal me, Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus. Heal my heart. Heal my heart. Let's finally talk to God tonight. That Father, please heal my heart. Heal my heart in the name of Jesus. One of the worst blindness that can happen to any child of God is blindness of heart. That Lord God Almighty, because Jesus, but the Bible says, I will take away from you the heart of stone and I will give you the heart of flesh. Father, please heal my heart in the name of Jesus. Heal my heart in the name of Jesus and open my ears in the name of Jesus. That well, when I'm going wrong, Father, Oh, help me to hear you when you are directing me. My ear shall hear a word behind you, behind me. Oh, Lord, oh, in my heart tonight, in the name of Jesus. Let's call on God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Father, we want to say thank you tonight. We thank you for teaching us from this John chapter 9 all through the month. We thank you for revelation into your word. We thank you for the impartation of your word. Father, we thank you for your vessel, your daughter you have used also to speak to us with simplicity. Father God Almighty, we pray that as we continue in the remaining days in this month and, and beyond, let the world continue to prosper in our lives in the name of Jesus. Is there any one of us that wherever that we that needs an encounter of opening of eyes, whether spiritually, whether physically? Father, we pray tonight. Father, please let us not miss that encounter. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let us see the unseen. Give us access into the realm of the Holy Spirit. Into the realm of the Spirit. Lord, in the realm of the Spirit, we will not be blind. In the realm of the Spirit, we will not be blind. In the realm of the Spirit, we will not be blind. In the name of Jesus. Let every satanic veil, demonic veil, covering our mind, covering our eyes, let it be removed and let it be roasted by fire. In the name of Jesus. We will serve you in your, own, on your, in your own terms. In the name of Jesus. We will build according to pattern. In the name of Jesus. We will not go astray, O God, in the name of Jesus. We will not do that which that will make you to be angry with us. And Lord God Almighty, your name will be glorified in our lives. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. 
Amen. Amen. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Omar, for, for the word. And I pray as we continue to study further, may the Lord continue to reveal his word to us in Jesus' name. Let us not forget, quick, by, by the grace of God, on Friday, on Friday night, it's our on Pentecost, but we'll be meeting from 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. on Saturday morning. 12 hours marathon prayer. Amen. It, it, it's going to be intermittent leading, but it's not going to be leading all through. Just enter. I'll be here by the grace of God and pray. I know what the Spirit of God revealed to me and what we need to do to counter it or to, I mean, to put it, bring it to pass or to, to bring it to pass, to counter it, we need prayers. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. And by the grace of God, we will still continue to do one or two things about our regular prayer schedule. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Shall we stand to our feet tonight? The month of, uh, the month of April, by the grace of God, is going to be our month of restoration. It's going to be our re month of restoration. The glory will return. Grace will be restored. In the name of Jesus. Power of God will rest on, on our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the month of April, I decree we will not suffer loss. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray in the month of April, whatever that is not enough now, will be more than enough in the name of Jesus. The, the month of April will be a month that we will eat in plenty and we will be satisfied. In the mighty name of Jesus. I decree in the month of April, in the name of Jesus, your strength will not fail. Your spiritual strength will not fail. Your physical strength will not fail. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell unto the Lord forever. Amen. It is my year of double portion. I am enjoying a common favor and I am helped. Congratulations to me. Congratulations to you in Jesus' name. Please don't forget Sunday is potluck, right? Sunday is potluck uh, and Thanksgiving service being the month of April. And Thanksgiving service, may the Lord bless us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us not forget marathon prayer, 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. Amen. Hallelujah. Is that 11 hours? Okay, so it's going to be 6 to 6 then. 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. May the Lord give us the grace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Amen. We need to develop stature, not status. Amen. 